every time I go to the server to find Every friend in the house wants to see me tonight With a little shot and now my village is right All I wanna do is see you to the full sunlight Hello people, it's Poet And We're back on the time shot server as you can see, I've done quite a bit of work to the house. Um, I don't know where I last left off with you guys. I think maybe I had only done just even the bottom frame of it. Uh, maybe a little bit of this. Uh, but I've pretty well finished doing the basic framing of it now up to the, the first floor. Um, and I just have to fix a few little things. Uh, and I can do that in this episode, and I'm planning on starting the floor in this episode as well. Uh, I am completely, 100% out of spruce wood. I think this is all that I have left right now. Let's just check. None there. This is all dark wood. That's oak. Uh, that's dark wood planks. That's oak. And that's dark wood again. So I'm completely out of spruce. That means that I will have to go and and get some more. Uh, I might do that. But I kind of had another plan for this episode. And that involved a lot of cobblestone. Uh, which I don't actually have a lot of. I guess what I could do is use stone brick as well. Um, yeah... I might do that. I might use stone brick instead. Because I just have so much of it. And when I mine it up, it turns back into stone brick. You know, as opposed to using like the normal stone, it would turn to cobblestone, which is, I'd have to smelt it all again. Um, okay, but first things first. Gotta fix a few little things. Ah, oh, crap. Can I sleep? It's not nighttime. Not anywhere near nighttime. So, we're gonna have the rain for a little while. Uh, I need these. Okay, and what I wanted to do... Yeah, I have to fix a few things that I noticed from afar. And that's just basically that I i haven't put the, uh, the little stone slabs along the windows on these pushed out sections. Like, I, I put out these pushed out sections again, and then I forgot to put the little the pieces there. So that's a minor thing. Uh, I'm working on a pathway up. I'll have to kind of just... I'll have to make it stick out a little bit more because I need more room than just two blocks up here. Uh, that'll be good. Oh yeah. Now we're going to go inside and work on it. Uh, okay, so... Whoop, that one and that one. I'll just go across and break them all first. So, that's all done. I think that's all done. There's my horse. And there. And now I can start fixing it slowly. It, yeah. Like so. There we go. So, apparently, a stronghold has been found. I haven't had a chance to watch the episode yet. Um, is that, is that right? Does that look normal? How come it looks this way? How come it looks so odd shaped in the front? It's almost like this building should stick out a little bit more. Like it should be one block more. Let's see how it looks at the end. At the end it looks the same. Hmm. So now I'm kind of thinking, what if I were to take these out? Oh, the treasure chest is making it so that I can't jump there. It's annoying. That's annoying! Let me jump there. Okay. So what if I took out this piece here and just made this like one big window? Oh... So that's what happens. Hmm. It's an interesting idea. 
don't know that I like it. <laughs> let's, let's put these back. Just see how that looks. Mm, no, I don't think I like that idea. So I'm going to actually just fix that again. Yeah, that'll be fine for now. Uh, but yeah, there's a stronghold found. Nia and Liam found it. Uh, and they said that it was only after about 15 minutes or so of looking that they found it. And they said that it was under a mountain. That's all that I know. So, I mean, there's a mountain there. Which would be, depending if, where they started, like if they started from spawn, to get all the way there and dig down, might be about 16 minutes or so. And the only other mountains that I really know about uh, would be kind of in that direction behind uh, Two Girls on Minecraft's house. Their house is right... You see the, that birch forest over there that I'm zooming into? Their house is like right, right, right behind there. So there's mountains all over the place behind that. Uh, it could be in that direction, which would be also pretty good. Either way, it looks like it's pretty close to where we are, um, which is kind of a nice feature because that means that if we want... Uh, to get to the end, that uh, our portals and stuff, it won't take us very long to get to the end. So that'll be nice. Uh, but okay, so we got this basic framing up. And I need to find a block that I'm happy with. I was thinking of crafting tables, because, you know, me and crafting tables. Um, so that might be the way to do it. And basically what I would do is just, it would be crafting tables all along. Oops, uh-oh. I'm in here now. Hold on. Ride the horse, and then shift to get out. There we go. It's called horse parkour. Um, a lot of this would be blocked off anyway. Hmm. Hmm. The floor goes on this level. I'm just trying to... <laughs> just trying to sort it out. You'd only be able to see the middle blocks. So let's see. If I make... some crafting tables, let's just do that. Um... Okay, that makes only three, but I got these and these that I'm going to make some more with. Oh no, I made my spruce! Ah, oh, crap. For some reason I thought that was dark wood. Well, there goes my last mount of spruce. Four crafting tables here. And I think that's all she wrote. Okay, so 19 should be enough. And you just put that, like in the middle of every spacing because uh, there's going to be something covering each one more or less uh, and then there'd be one in the middle here so I'll skip that for now I'll skip that again for now I got ideas in my head for a, a nice little house. And this is the idea that I had back on the Red Cube server. As I'm sure you're aware, it looks very much the same. I'm modifying it just ever so slightly here and there so far. But basically, uh, so far it's the same idea. Uh, let's see. One other little mistake I just noticed in looking around. And that's this part right here. I think I had covered that in before and then these were done like windows uh, using dark wood I believe the dark oak or whatever they call it eh. ah! oh god please do not burn down my house I do not want my house burned down okay I can sleep so let's get rid of the night and the rain all in one shot Let's do that, please. I'm sick and tired of lightning and the nightness. 
So there. There we go. Beautiful day. Uh, okay, so I got some dark oak in my inventory now. Just turn that into stairs. I'll need more than that, actually. Okay. Um, we've moved our server. Not to a new host, but they moved us to a different location. So uh, we were in... Uh, let's see, where were we before? Virginia, I believe. And now we are in Seattle. So... Seattle to Virginia is quite a move, but all in all, it's, I think, the best decision. Uh, and we're experiencing pretty good, pretty good lag now. Um, I don't think I've heard any complaints from anybody in a while. So that's good. That's a bonus. Okay, I'm not ready to do that thing that I was going to do with that. So I'm going to put those away for now everything away that I don't really need to hold on to. I'm running out of space, man. Space, man. Okay, uh, and that. So, I need oak planks. Of course, I, I don't have oak planks. I have oak slabs up the wazoo. But not really any planks. So I'm going to make some. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, that'll do. <laughs> and we just we just start like like that, I guess. Uh actually Actually, actually If I want to make this look nice from the outside, those have to be dark oak. Ah, oh, that won't be enough. That probably won't be enough either. I'll just make the whole thing. It'll have to be like that all the way around. And that way when people look upwards, like from down there, up, they can see just dark oak and it'll look nice. And Yeah, that'll, that'll be good. A lot of it'll be covered anyway, but I just want things to be uniform. Want it to be visually appealing. Uh, but yeah, anyway, our, our lag is a lot better now that we've moved to Seattle. We've moved to a different node, as they call it. Um, and so far, so good, I think. Uh, I haven't really heard any complaints from anybody. Uh, which is, to me, a relief. Because uh, I was hearing complaints about lag almost constantly up until now. So... Uh, to not hear any of that, that's a really good thing. Uh, and then we can just move on and start making great content on the server without any kind of lag at all. Uh, let's see. There we go. So, in this episode, I don't really have anything to talk about. So, I was thinking of maybe, just maybe, uh, talking about my my family a little bit. I know that I've talked about them pff, eons ago, it feels like. But just to tell you about, like, uh, who my family is, what they're like, uh, and what I think about them, and things like that, and whether they watch this episode or not, it's, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, my opinions won't change. So... Let's see, I have currently a brother and a half-sister, uh, but I've always, all my life, considered her a f my, my, my true blood sister. Like, I know that some people make a point of always saying my half-sister, and I just did there because, you know, I'll be, I'll be truthful about my family and stuff, but to be perfectly honest, uh, I've always known her to be my, my my sister, you know, and that's it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's just, she's my sister, and that's that. Um, and that, that, that in itself I could talk a lot about. But I'll start with, uh, I guess just me growing up. 
uh, and my family environment and stuff like that. I know that a lot of you know, because um, I've mentioned it enough, that we didn't have a whole lot when I was growing up. Um, although my parents tried their best. They did their best to try to make sure that my brother and I uh, were really happy um, and things like that. And I say my brother and I, and I don't include my sister there because uh, basically, uh, I just got a text. Text from Nia. Apparently, there's someone in a in a ditch or something needing a push. Or, it's snowing where she lives, so. But anyway, uh, not to be distracted from my story. Um, my sister. Uh, is 11 years older than I am and I'm I'm the middle child so uh, she's what would that be like 13 or 14 no hold on how 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 much older than I, than my brother am I <laughs> I am two and a half years older than my brother uh, so we're pretty close as you can imagine being that close in age uh, my sister being 11 years older than me and being, I guess, that would make her about 13 or 14 years older than my brother. Uh, we weren't as close, but I know that my sister always, uh, you know, loved me very much and cared about me and and always made sure to uh, take care of take care of us the best that she could and that kind of stuff whenever she was given that opportunity um, but let's see my brother and I uh, we didn't have a whole lot growing up so uh, but we didn't really need a, a whole lot and maybe that's kind of a reflection of how the world is today you know thinking about it but like as far as video games go if that's what you're talking about uh, things of that kind. We didn't have a lot of that. Um, like, we had, I guess, uh, an NES, a Nintendo, uh, just like every every kid did back then, uh, pretty well. Um, but we didn't get it, like, when the Nintendo came out, because our parents couldn't really afford that. So when everybody else was already upgrading to the Super Nintendo we got a regular Nintendo kind of thing and kind of had to play catch up with the rest of the world. Uh, but we didn't really need video games. We grew up on a farm, um, although my dad didn't really farm it. Um, I think he probably helped out a little bit in the fields and stuff, but not very much. Um, I think we, we rented it to some farmer who actually did do something with it and and that was that uh, now we didn't need a lot because basically having a giant field at our uh, disposal we could explore we could play things like make believe I guess is the way to to word it we used our imagination to have fun you know, that's me growing up, was just using my imagination and using what you got. And when you don't got much, you know, it is what it is. Um, we didn't need much. We lived a very simple life growing up. Uh, somewhere along the way, uh, my, my mother's side, my aunt and uncle had financial troubles of some kind. Now, I'm not even sure what kind of financial troubles they had, uh, if I'm to be perfectly honest with you, um, because we were too young to even understand that kind of stuff, or, you know, they thought we were, so they didn't tell us why or what or how. But when we were growing up, when I was about maybe eight years old or so, uh, my my aunt and uncle came to live with us at that farm and that included my my two cousins uh, they came to live with us as well my cousin uh, became basically my best friend 
he was only three years older than I. And so it was basically me and him and my brother uh, running along, causing trouble around the, f the little farm that we had. And I say a farm. It wasn't like a farm with animals or anything like that. It was just like a, a, a crop, a crop farm, <laughs> you know, a, a field, sunflowers and flax and, and wheat, and they grew all kinds of stuff. But I digress. We lived a simple life, and we had fun. My cousin and I, he was one of the biggest influences in my life as far as, like, video games is concerned. Like, if I'm to thank anybody for getting me into video games. Uh, I remember the days of going to his house and playing on his Super Nintendo before I had a Super Nintendo and being able to, like, you know, just just have that experience even though our family couldn't afford it. So, you know, I owe a lot of who I am and what I do to, to him, actually. Quite a bit of that. Let's see here. I'll go like that. I think I do. Yeah. I think that's how I want it. Um, so having him live with us, my other cousin, his sister, uh, was I think three years older than he is or, or something like that. Uh, so, you know, she wasn't into the video games type of thing and whatever. Uh, but he was, definitely. And so we, having him live with us, we played a lot of video games and did lots of that kind of stuff. So, for me, growing up, that was actually, it was a pretty cool experience. I don't know what my, my my aunt and uncle and everything, what what they had to go through. I just, I don't know. I was never told, so I don't know. But I imagine it wasn't a very good experience, assuming that they, they didn't have a house anymore and they had to come and live with us. You know, that you put two and two together, that, uh, that wasn't a very nice experience for them. Um, but for me growing up, I was perfectly happy with that. You know, all of a sudden my cousin comes to live with us and we get to play video games together all the time. It's like, to me, that was amazing. And even to this day, like, uh, I remember uh, when my cousin got married eventually, this was a few years ago now, uh, and I was at the wedding, uh, at, the, at the reception anyway, and uh, he was, I heard him talking about me uh, about people were saying like, wow, he looks exactly like you. Because we look very similar uh, in many ways. And uh, so he was basically saying like, uh, you know, oh yeah, uh, we used to live together. And, uh, you know, he, he we used to play video games together, things like that. We still introduce each other that way, you know, that we used to live together and kind of shows how close we were. We don't really communicate too much these days. Um, although, you know, whenever I do get in touch with him, we have a lot to talk about. Um, he's still into video games quite a bit. Um, you know, geek true and true, just like, just like uh, the rest of us, I guess. Um, but he's got a wife now, uh, a new house, I think their first house. I don't know if they're planning on having kids. I, I really have no idea. But he's into sound engineering, he always has been. So he's, he's doing that kind of stuff as well. And, uh, he's even offered to maybe get together and do some sound engineering for me, uh, on my channel here. Uh, which hasn't actually, it hasn't bloomed into anything yet. Uh, mostly my fault, I guess, because I haven't taken the initiative and said, yes, let's meet on this day and and just do it, you know. Um, and there's also the conflict that, you know, my brother has his degree in music and 
is basically a sound engineer as well. And both my cousin and I agreed like, well, you know, we don't want to take anything away from him, but you know, he's busy. Eh, it's, it's kind of a, a weird thing, but that's kind of my cousin. And like, just telling you guys that the way that I grew up was, you know, money problems, I guess are in my family. It's kind of a weird way to put it. My my aunt and uncle had to come live with us. I assume because of money problems. What other reason could could it possibly be? Um, they had a, their own kind of little house of sorts, a little suite in our basement. We'd all finished it for them, made it look nice. Uh, but let's see. My, my sister, well, no, I'll talk about my brother. My brother and I, like I said, we grew up together because we're only uh, three years apart, basically two and a half years apart. So we grew up together and did just about everything together. Um, but because of the, oops, because of the environment that we grew up in, I definitely would admit fully that it wasn't very, it wasn't a very happy childhood uh, for my brother anyway, um, I really honestly do think that a lot of what happens in a kid's life, like as far as them being bullies, or as far as them being cruel to others, or being bad people, or, you know, that kind of stuff, a lot of it does have to do with the parents. It's... It's a, th a thing that I'm surprised a lot of people don't seem to acknowledge. Um, or if they do acknowledge it, it's very hard to solve that kind of problem. Like, I, I, I hear it a lot, especially in, in Canada, um, and being close to northern Canada, where they have a lot of the uh, Aboriginal people of Canada. You know, what, what a lot of you would call Native Americans. Um and that kind of stuff uh, and they have a lot of problems where people don't go to school and uh, they get into drugs very early and they have a lot of problems in life and quite a lot of that is actually attributed to the parents you know question that I always raise is well where are the parents you know um, the reason that I didn't get into a lot of that kind of stuff was because I had parents telling me about how horrible it was and and or showing me how horrible it was, you know. Uh, my mother smoked, it still does, uh, and probably did while she was pregnant, that kind of stuff. That's why my brother and I both have asthma. Uh, and, you know, we got to see firsthand, like, oh, that's something that we don't want in our lives. Um if they didn't already tell us, like, you know, don't do drugs because, you know, they're, they're bad. <laughs> okay. But, you know, we, we had a parent or parental figures in our lives, um, telling us constantly that, you know, you don't do that kind of stuff, that it was bad. Well, you know, I'm, I'm basically saying people in, uh, northern Canada and on reserves and things like that, a lot of the time, f unfortunately, don't have that parental guidance um, where they can say, like, this is bad, or the parents themselves are a bad influence because of just the way that they were raised, the way that they were brought up, and it's absolutely not 100% that way. Um, I have lots of actually close personal friends who grew up on... Uh, reserves and, and things like that. Um, uh, one of my aunts is actually from from one of the reserves. And, you know, they turned out what, like wonderful, wonderful people. Um, and it's just, you know, it's about how they were raised. So what does this have to do with me? Well, my parents never get along. They, they still don't. They never will. Uh, will they get a divorce? More than likely, eventually, you know, but I think they're only together for the financial 
reasons. I've mentioned this before in episodes of Red Cubed and stuff, that I don't think that they're meant for each other. Uh, they argue constantly, fight constantly. I've had a lot of people then come to me and say, well, what what can you do to, to alleviate that? As a kid growing up in that, what can you do? And unfortunately, you know, you just got to start thinking for yourself. Uh, it, it makes you grow up really fast, unfortunately. And, you know, sometimes a lot of people aren't really ready for that. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Um, you have to grow up really fast and realize that maybe your parents aren't the mature ones. You have to be. Um, so, my brother and I, we didn't get along. That's what I'm getting to, is that we didn't get along even slightly. We did everything together, you know. And I think we, we definitely loved each other. Um, and a lot of what my brother did, he emulated from me. But I do believe that it's because of the way that my parents behaved. This is getting back to the way, you know, what I was saying about parents and how they act and, and that kind of thing. I do believe that the way that they acted towards each other, the arguing, the, the shouting, there wasn't ever physical abuse, but there was just so much anger and, and frustration there and, and hatred, I'd even go so far as to say, that a lot of that, like I grew up almost thinking, not thinking that it was, it was the way to, to behave, but I would pick on my brother a lot, very badly. Uh, and do I regret that? Absolutely, you know. Uh, my brother and I have, have grown so close over the, the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years even, I'd say, uh, that I couldn't imagine ever behaving the way that I did. But, you know, I would pick on him. I would push him around, I would bully him, uh, make fun of him, tease him, uh, and even uh, hurt him, you know, I'd, I'd throw things at him, hit him with things, and, you know, be, I know that a lot of people will say, well, that's just how older brothers are, but I've seen a lot of families where, you know, the children always get along and really care about each other, and I think that has a lot to do with how the parents behaved. Uh, my parents didn't get along and argued all the time and fought. And I think a lot of that sort of just rubbed off on the way that I behaved. So, you know, and unfortunately, my brother and I didn't get along very well when we were growing up. And, you know, I think we still had a pretty good childhood. Uh, we, like I said, my parents did their best to make us happy with what little they had. Um... But I kind of wish, if I could do anything over again in my life, that I could go back and just try to make my brother a little bit happier than I probably made him. Although, you know, a lot can be said about the way that people are nowadays and what shapes you and, you know, the way you behave now might have a lot to do with the way you behaved back then and yada, yada, yada. Um, but I don't think, like, it's so weird because... I got bullied in school quite a bit, and a lot of that turned into my own anger. Uh, I bullied a few kids quite a bit, um, and my brother included. And I feel really bad about that, uh, knowing that, you know, if I made anybody unhappy in life, that, you know, I, I could have avoided it. But, you know, it's, it's almost all that I knew. That looks pretty good, eh? Looks pretty good. Need to put a crafting table in those spots that I avoided. I think the crafting tables look okay. I might try a different block. Just because. But what kind of block? Maybe redstone? Hmm. Yeah, maybe redstone. Maybe redstone blocks, because that would shine. That would look really good. 
either that or redstone lamps and then actually make it light up ooh now we are talking now we're talking yeah that might be good with redstone lamps um, and then I'd have to cover it all of course but I think that would be very possible I just put the lamp and then put the lever on the side of it like make a bunch of levers and then just put the levers on the side that might be the way to do it so I might do that I might do redstone lamps actually yeah Um, alright, so yeah, my brother and I didn't get along very well. My sister, meanwhile, uh, keeping in mind, like, back when I was a kid, my parents were very secretive people. Um, for embarrassment reasons, and they still are that way. Uh, I'm telling you guys this, but if they knew that I was telling you guys this, they would probably be extraordinarily upset with me. And if they find out about this, then that's just the way that it's gonna have to be. Uh... You know, I'm a grown man, and I can I can take a little bit of punishment in that sense. Uh, but they, to save face, they didn't tell my brother and I that my sister was a half-sister. They lied about it right to our face. Um, you know, my sister has a different color hair than my brother and I, or even than my dad and my mom. You know, she's a blonde, blonde-haired girl, and... Why is she blonde haired and we all have brown hair? You know, this is, you know, this is very weird. And we used to make fun of her for it because we were lied to all of our lives, basically told that she was our sister. Uh, and then it was only very recently, actually, maybe six or seven years ago that my brother and I found out that my sister was actually... Uh, a half sister and my my sister herself didn't even know that we knew because uh last year as i was showing my sister around my my new house here she actually pulled me aside into one of the rooms and in private said like you know i have something to tell you and i don't know if you know i don't know how you're going to take it uh, but I have to just tell you that you know I'm not, I'm not your your full sister. And I said, yeah, I know, and I still love you anyway. You know that's the way that it goes. Um, she didn't know. She had no clue that I knew. Okay, I'm just gonna mark out what I'm doing with these blocks. I'm gonna mark out my territory here. I think... Oh, here's Nia. I'll just say, recording. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. She didn't know. Now it's all kind of out in the open. Five minute drive, less than half a mile. Saw seven accidents. Oh, see, what did I tell you? She texted me that she was... I guess she decided not to drive out because there's snow in there and yeah. Anyway, I'm plotting out my space. I think it'll start just like this. Is that big enough? Yeah, I think that's much bigger than I need it to be. I could talk about snow. <laughs> um. Yeah. I'm getting distracted by the conversation. My ADD won't allow it. Okay. Basically, my sister didn't know, but now we, we all have it out in the open. You know, uh, do I get along with my brother now? Absolutely. My brother and I get along very, very, very well. Um, and I don't even know what, what changed. He went to high school. I went to college. I think that's a lot about what happened. Is that we kind of just grew up, you know? We stopped being kids. We started being adults. And 
I think we both made the conscious decision, like, you know, hating each other. Why do we hate each other? What? Why would I pick on you? Why would I bully you? Why would we do this? It doesn't make any sense. And we even, like, I don't think we ever discussed it, but I think we, we in passing, have both agreed, like, oh, well, it was because of the way that we were brought up. But we we get along very well now, and uh, it can only be explained by basically the fact that, you know, we we grew up. We were kind of forced to grow up, I guess, is the way to put it. Um, my sister, we get along okay. Um, not as well as my brother and I, but there's that age difference. And the fact that my sister, I don't know if it was the way that she was brought up. Um, I know that she didn't have a very good time at school either. And as opposed to me, where I can go and say, well, you know, all those times in school that I was bullied, you know, I, I kept to myself. I kept to my own thoughts. I strived at being independent. I it made me stronger. It made me a stronger person. It gave me tougher skin. My sister on the other hand, I think it really really hurt her self-esteem um and maybe as a a female as a girl, it had a different effect. I know that she had uh an abusive boyfriend at one point in her life uh who who did take advantage of her quite a bit. Uh, in that, you know, she was gullible and had nobody else and, and he would just, you know, put lots of thoughts and ideas in her mind that might not have been true and she ended up running away from home when she was, I think, 17. There was a lot going on with her life. So I don't know if it was, you know, all of that kind of added up and made her who she is today. But she got in to some pretty weird groups uh, met her husband there, and it's just, I don't know, they're they are a weird bunch now. They have a son together, and they don't want to put him into school because of the experience she had. So they homeschool her, even though she didn't even get, like, a 10th grade education. So, I don't know. It's, it's just all very odd, and I can rant about them for a lot. And I have before in episodes. But we, we still get along. I text her quite often, quite regularly, just to say, you know, how's it going, what's up, what you doing. And uh, I think that she appreciates that. And I, I help her with her computer and stuff all the time because she, she doesn't know computers the way that, that I do, obviously. And not that's she makes fun of it because I know computers well enough to be an IT professional. And she barely knows how to turn the thing on. So, you know. But, yeah, we get along. All right. Um, my mother and I, let's jump to that. Uh, we get along pretty good. My mom was actually over here last night. Um, and I think because her and my dad don't get along at all, um, she confides in me a lot in like her what what's going on with her job um what's going on with with the friends that she has if you can call them friends um you know how how she's basically picked on by people and here she is she's basically retirement age and she's having to deal with people who dislike her and want her out of her job and try to manipulate others around her to get her out of her job and you know things like that just interwork politics it's not really an office that she works in but you know the fact that she has to deal with that stuff um at her age is just kind of ridiculous and so she confides in me a lot and we have that kind of relationship where we get along enough that she can tell me a lot of things that she might not tell other people um, so there's that she was over here uh, last night and she's the typical mom you know uh, why do you have dishes in the 
in the sink. Do you want me to help you do the dishes? No. No. You're a guest. Just... I'll do my dishes. Don't worry about my dishes. Well, I can help. It won't take very long at all. Look, I'm I'm half done already. And she'll be, like, grabbing up laundry and things like that. And it's like, just... No. Calm down. You're a guest. Have, have fun. Have a cup of coffee. Have a slice of pizza that I have sitting here, you know? Don't worry about, you know, motherly stuff. But, you know, she loves me, and I know that, so... Uh, there's that. Our relationship has always been kind of that way. Um, my dad is a frustrating one. Um, him and I get along extraordinarily well, but it wasn't always that way, I think. My dad loves cars, okay? And I know that a lot of you know that I've got a lot of cars. I've sold quite a few um, since my, my heyday when I had a lot. Um, but I buy cars really, really, really cheap, and I fix them up myself, and then sell them for a lot, you know, flipping cars kind of thing. There's not a lot of money to be had in it, but that's what we do. That's what my dad and I do. It's our projects together. It's what we've always done. It's what his passion is more than anything. Um, and that's just kind of the way that he, he is. That's the way that, ooh, it's dark up there. I gotta light it up. Hmm. Hmm. There we go. I might be able to defend now. Oops. But basically, my dad likes cars. That's old cars, classic cars from the the you name it age, 30s, 40s. 50s, 60s, you know, you name it, like I say, he likes them. And if you like them, he'll like you. It's kind of the way to put it. When I was growing up, I used to go to car shows with him, you know, those shows where they, the show in shines, where they show off all the nice cars and stuff. I, I actually couldn't really tolerate going to those. I hated walking around amongst people. You know, I wanted to be home playing on my computer. I didn't want to be out there, you know, looking at cars that I've seen a million times before. And I actually disliked it. Um, but like, my brother started getting into it. He bought a, an old car and started working on it. And I would, I would be on the computer doing whatever, doing programming, I guess, uh, which was my hobby at the time. And I'd be doing that, and all of a sudden I'd see, like, oh, my brother's out there and my dad's with him, and they're spending a lot of time together, and they have a lot to talk about. And I felt so left out. So I actually started taking an interest in cars. And now... I have a 72 Nova slash Ventura. I've got a 39 Chevy. I've got a 1980 Camaro. I've got a 1977 Corvette. I've got a 2009 Challenger, Dodge Challenger. So I've got cars now. Those are my, my toys. And my dad and I have a lot to talk about with uh, cars and stuff. And uh, more recently, home renovation stuff as well. But my dad, that's that's his only interest. That's really his only, only interest. And my mom even relates this to him. When she met him, she said some kind of comment like uh, how when they met, she said, Oh, he likes cars. You know, that's interesting. And she started to take a little bit of an interest in it too, just because, you know, you're... You're getting to know each other. You're dating, maybe. And uh, you start to take an interest in whatever everybody is interested in and so on. And then she started realizing this is more than just an interest in cars. It's an obsession uh, in cars. He couldn't get enough. Always, always, always talking about it. And that's just the way that he he is, even to this day. 
so their fighting, their their lack of passion for each other is a lot to do with the fact that his only passion is in those cars that he, he looks at and likes and f works on and fixes and, you know, that's all that there is to it. And at the end of the day, I often have to think to myself, like, well, if I didn't have this this love for cars that I do now, that I developed, he probably wouldn't give me the time of day either. You know, it's a sad fact. So in that sense, like I said, it's frustrating. He's frustrating. Um, if you don't get along with him in that sense, just forget about it. And, uh, almost emotionless in that sense, too. Uh... He, he grew up in a weird environment. I don't even... I can't even begin to start to think about how it probably was for him. Um, but you get the impression that it wasn't very happy either. Although he might have been happy. Um, it almost seems like they grew up without rules or, or guidance. <laughs> like, I know that that wasn't true. They were, I think they grew up in a very strict family, and it was very Catholic, and, and uh, you know, which is in itself rules and regulations, feels like anyway. Um, but you get the impression, like, I, I had a friend who, well, I, I guess I won't tell, it's so morbid to even think about it, but just to, my dad can be very insensitive and to give you that impression, I had a friend who passed away. It was basically my best friend. I don't have a lot of friends in real life. That's a fact. Um, I've never gotten along with ever anybody in school. And the ones that I, I did get along with have either moved on or done other things or moved away. So I've got, like, nobody living here that I really relate to. I've got ex-co-workers who I still meet up with from time to time. But that's about it. So I had one really good best friend that I grew up with. We spent almost all of our childhood together. And he took his own life. It's really, really sad. Uh, it, it affected me in ways... Maybe I'll talk about that in another episode. But uh, he took his own life. And it was really traumatic to me. And when we were leaving the funeral... My dad was there too, because our families knew each other, you know. My dad was there uh, for me and for their family, and so was my mom, actually, but... Uh, I remember him making a comment like, uh, I wonder how he did it. This is after, when we were leaving. I wonder how he did it, because he looked okay to me. And... I... That upset me so much to think that, you know, here I was basically almost traumatized. I was upset. My best friend was gone. And rather than being sensitive, and if you have a, a sick thought like that, keep it to yourself at least. He went and... and and just openly asked it without ever thinking that it might affect other people and that's kind of the way that he'll be he will he will say things about people about the way that they look about the way that they their weight is even though he's not a looker and his weight is pretty big he doesn't care he doesn't think about how it'll affect other people he just thinks about himself and, and so it's a weird relationship that him and I have. Uh, we do get along because of the, the what my interests are. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it's a, I'd almost say strained. He's very, very, very helpful to me. He gave me uh, so much to help me get into the house that I'm in. Um, but it's a weird relationship, you know? It's just a weird relationship. And... And the way that he acts is often not very admirable. So, I don't know. How do you even describe it? It's just odd. 
but that's basically my family not the best the best uh, <laughs> families out there but it's what I've got you know I do I do love them all even my dad who can be a bit insensitive cuz he does have good moments you know the way that he's helped me out has been insurmountable it's just you know, he's given me literally thousands of dollars that he doesn't have. He's gone into debt for me. And, and for that, I, 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 you know, it, it does mean a lot to me. My mom, she cares loads about me, can't give me anything because of her financial situation. And uh, I wish very much that she had it better. My brother, he's living uh, with a girlfriend now and a roommate, I think. Um, he's not making very much money as it is, uh, being a struggling musician. I think he, he has a degree in music and he's working as a, uh, a server at a restaurant, you know, is, is the way that he, he is now, which is too bad. You know, he deserves a lot more than that. My sister, um, call her a half sister or, or not. She's always been my full sister. She has a kid now, husband and, uh, I don't know. She's she's now working at a a meat a meat shop, a butcher shop kind of. Um and trying to survive with her son who she refuses to put in school. My cousin, he's married, he's happy, you know. They're they're now all living happily ever after. Um my dad's side of the family, I didn't really talk about um I don't get along with any of them. That's kind of the way that it is. I just don't have anything uh, to say to them. I can't even say anything nice. They all are kind of the same way as my dad. Almost emotionless. I can come up to them and say, Hey, how's it going? Haven't seen you in, in a long time. And they'll nod and say, Yep. You know, so that's kind of the way that they're, they are. But that's about it, I think. For this episode, we worked on the house quite a bit. It's been a long episode, long, long episode. But hope you guys enjoyed it, just giving you... I've talked about a lot of this stuff before, but, you know, updates and stuff. Um, and I put a little bit of a... I'm not finished yet, obviously, but a wall around my border. I'm going to uh, maybe dig out more of this mountain, maybe more of that mountain. Maybe I'll keep that mountain. That looks kind of nice. I like that, the way that it looks. But flatten out this, cut down all of these trees. All of these trees I want to cut down. Um, maybe keep the dark oak around my uh, my property. But inside my property, I want acacias. I love acacias. I'm going to have a whole bunch of them in here. So with that, like this video because of my long, honest, and open talk. Subscribe if you haven't already for more like this. And do all those other awesome things that you people do. We'll check you out next time in the Time Shot server. Bye bye.